Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm excited to do, but I'm also slightly humiliated to do this video. Today we are going to be talking about the oldest products that I have in my makeup collection. And if you're thinking, Samantha, your desk behind you looks really messy, couldn't you clean up to do this video? Those are the products we're talking about today. And normally when I film, I put everything in a little plastic container and I bring it next to me. There was too much. There was too much to put into one container. So this is gonna be an interesting video. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome. So I always start off with an outfit of the day. And today, this is what I'm wearing. I actually have normal flip flops on instead of my slippers, very strange. Uh, I just have on some distressed jeans and a yellow tank top. I did also do some filming on my eye look and I used a new eyeshadow palette. Would you look at that? But I got this quad sent to me from Rowan and I've never tried anything from them before. This is their eyes on me quad. So this is how I got my eye look. I posted like a chatty uh, style video on my TikTok, which is by Samantha March. And then I did just like an up close demo of the eyeshadow look for my Instagram, which is March Beauty Word. So you can check that if you want to see how I got this look. I feel a little bit little fall vibes right now. I always link everything that I'm wearing in my description box if there's anything that you are curious about and I always link all of the products that I talk about. Though a lot of these products have been discontinued, are not in stock anymore because I'm talking about products from, from many years ago that I still have in my collection. So the idea for this video came because I've been chatting in my last handful of videos. Uh, I've done a project pan, I've done a chatty get ready with me about this subject, but about how I'm feeling really overwhelmed with makeup right now. And I have been a social media content creator, blogger since 2009. I really got into the beauty community in 2015, 2016. I've been doing this for a long time and it definitely kind of ebbs and flows. And sometimes I'm like, you're buying too much. It's too overwhelming. And other times I'm like, I'm at Sephora every single week. Life is great. Right now I'm in the it's too much stage and I'm feeling very overwhelmed. So I've mentioned that I've wanted to cut back on not only buying new makeup, but feeling a pressure to try all of the new makeup, even though that's usually what does better on YouTube and across the other platforms, people still really do have a desire to see all of the new releases, but I'm trying to take that pressure off of myself. And this video came because in my project pan, I was talking about the single shadow from Makeup Geek in Creme Brulee. And I said, this is probably my oldest eyeshadow. And then I kind of stopped and I was like, wait, I kind of want to go through my collection now and see what is my oldest makeup products. So that is how we pulled this video together. But again, I've been kind of thinking, what are some, some video ideas that I can create focused on what I already have in my collection? I actually posted my chatty get ready with me the day that I'm sitting down to film this. So I've been reading the comments. And it's been so lovely. Uh, you know, obviously I was really nervous to post the video and just kind of share how I've been feeling and afraid I was going to upset people and all of that. But it has been so supportive. A lot of you are also feeling the same way. And I've been getting so many ideas from your comment section on videos that you want to see. So keep those suggestions coming in. I'm looking at them. My assistant's looking at the comments. Like we're making lists of what we can make, um, especially for right now when I just feel a little bit overwhelmed and I need to kind of just just cut back and I want to enjoy what I already have in my collection. But like I said, some of these are from Makeup Geek. So I know right here is Peach Smoothie. This The center one is a Creme Brulee. And then I think, no, this one here is Shima Shima. So this one is also Makeup Geek. I believe the other ones are ColourPop or like a little bit newer Makeup Geek. Like this one is in Grandstand and that's Makeup Geek, but I didn't buy that in my first round. It was Peach Smoothie, Creme Brulee, and Shima Shima. If you were around beauty YouTube in like 2016, 2017, like do you still have these in your collection? Because I bet if you don't have them right now, you have them at some point or they were on your list of eyeshadows to buy at some point. Everybody had these shadows. Coco Bear was another one. That was one of my first shadows from Makeup Geek. But it's just, it's so funny to think back to that time where, like I referenced in my project pan, like Jaclyn Hill was making her Makeup Geek favorites and I was sitting down with a pen and paper and then I was going to Makeup Geek and I was ordering those eyeshadows. So I have had these for a very long time. I said in my project pan, I still have not been able to pan creme brulee, which is shocking to me because that was one of my only eyeshadows for such a long time. Like how did I not pan that one? It's, I'm shook. I'm gonna come back to eyeshadows because I have a more than I thought to talk about. I truly, I was like, maybe the Makeup Geek and like maybe one other palette. 
so we'll come back to that but uh the foundation that i'm wearing today in the spirit of trying to use older products and knowing that i was doing this video i was trying to be very aware of what products it was that i was choosing out but i have in this video the estee lauder double wear do you have the double wear in your collection now in my defense i did not buy this like right when it came out i, I didn't buy this even when it was at like the peak of double wear everybody was talking about double wear everybody was wearing double wear but i can remember not wanting to buy this one because so many people were saying it's so full coverage and i've never liked full coverage even when full coverage foundation was all the rage i was still just like I don't like the way that this looks on me. So I did not want to buy a more expensive Estee Lauder foundation and then not enjoy it. So it was a few years after that that I did eventually get this one and I actually really like it. So I have the shade three and one. Again, it is what I'm wearing today. I actually really like it and I don't find it to be full coverage. Um, I think that it's a nice medium buildable. I think it gives a really beautiful natural finish. It's also one of my most longer wearing foundations that I have. And I think that it's fantastic. I don't wear it all that much anymore because again, I'm always trying the new stuff. But tonight I'm like, you know, it's a Friday as I film this. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I, like maybe I'll go out somewhere. I'm like, I want a little bit of a long wearing foundation. It's hot outside, like let's do that. So that's how I chose the double wear. And then also, this is from Wander Beauty, the Nude Illusion Liquid Foundation. I don't know if you can see the mark here. Like I do not have, well, that's still a lot of foundation. Isn't that so funny that that's where my brain goes to? Like, because I have less than half, I'm like, I don't have a lot left. Like, yes, yes you do, Samantha. That's still a lot of foundation. <laughs> if I wasn't using a new foundation every single day of the week, I would probably have gone through this. But this foundation I have had for such a long time. I can remember Kathleen Lights raving about this one. I remember this is what I wore. If you've been an OG from, of mine for a while, you might remember some of these like memories I'm gonna say in this video. But there was a time where I went to Kansas City with my friends and also YouTubers, Kelly Gooch and Ashley Clady. She's no longer on YouTube, but she's doing very well. I always pass along your messages to her. And that was so long ago. <laughs> like That was so long ago that we did that. I wanna say maybe like 28, I think somewhere in that area. I've had this foundation for such a long time. Why do I still have it? Is it even still good? When does makeup actually expire? When does it go back? Like, I shouldn't have this in my collection anymore. I really need to. Oh, this is just gonna be such an embarrassing video. Speaking of makeup that is expired, I talked about this in my ranking all of my bronzers. So my ranking series is back. I usually do this in the summertime and I'm really excited because I feel like my ranking series is coming at a great time. This is where I go through all of the products in one category in my collection and I rank them from my least favorite to my top favorite. It's gonna be perfect for the content that I'm trying to make right now, not super focused on new makeup releases. But when I mentioned this one from Milk makeup their bronzer stick I was like this one has started to smell off like it does smell good it don't smell good no more so I said I was giving it it's a farewell to her before I start my declutter series at the end of the year but this one is definitely gonna have to go and really I don't even know how much I'm going to wear it between now and when I do start my declutter series because it does smell a little bit funky but I've had this one you know from the red wall day started this channel I lived in a house in Iowa and they had a beautiful front office which I thought was so great but it had red walls and I got so many comments all of the time about these red walls and I was like, I didn't paint them. And it was finally a few years later, I was able to afford to like buy the paint and like redo like, you know, a bunch of the rooms in the house, which was great. But when I talk about the red wall days, that's a long time ago because I think I painted the house in like 2018 or 2019. So it was a long time ago. So we say red wall days you know we're going backwards. <laughs> Two more bronzers, I'll just touch on these briefly because I've been talking about them a bit in some of my past videos, but from Marc Jacobs, the Omega Tantastic, pretty sure this is from the Red Ball days. Had this for a long time, I mentioned this in my Project Pan video. How I don't have pan in this thing, I have no idea. I hear people say they pan it super easily. Nothing's happening, it's like a never ending bronzer. I'm not mad at that fact because this was very expensive. I used it, like when I first bought this, I used it so sparingly because it was like a $49 
$50 bronzer and to me at that time like that was I couldn't believe I did something so crazy to buy a $49 bronzer and I would just use it for like special events like if there's like a wedding then I would use it something along those lines but now I use it super consistently and still it looks like I barely use it I might have that one in my collection forever and then also from Becca Cosmetics, the Capri Coast. Also mentioned this in my project pan because I did actually hit pan on this one. So there she is. But again, I, I'm pretty sure I bought this like right when it was coming out and we don't even have Becca Cosmetics anymore. There is, there is no Becca Cosmetics. So I've had this one for so many years, but I was very proud that I hit pan on it because it was one that I used so consistently for a while. A couple blushes that I have. <laughs> my dog let out a sigh like she was like here we go here we go she's gonna talk about buxom seychelles isn't she i don't even i i didn't even remember i had this in my collection i was going through my drawers and it was in the back and it was like kind of flipped on the side and i was like seychelles is that you this used to be my favorite i i i swear i swear i have a blush ranking video and this is number one Oh my gosh, I should have looked at I just I just thought of it right now as I was sitting down, but I swear it's from like maybe 2019 or something like that, ranking all of my blushes, ranking all my single blushes, something along those lines. And I swear if this isn't number one, it's maybe like number two, at least for sure in the top three spot. This used to be my jam. I used to wear this all of the time. And again, it doesn't even look like it. There's no, there's not even a dip. There's not even a dip in here. But who remembers Buxom Seychelles? Because I know I would get so many comments from people saying, I bought Seychelles because of you. Do you still have it? Are we in this together? <laughs> Help me out here. And I also had to mention from Jouer, this is their blush duo. What? This is the Adore blush duo. So I believe if I'm, oh, am I remembering correctly? I feel like I bought the bronzer duo first. And I loved it so much I bought the blush duo, but now honestly, I think I might be wrong. I think I might have bought the blush duo first and I loved it so much that I ended up purchasing the bronzer duo and I hit pan in the bronzer duo, which I was very proud of. This one, I like didn't do as well as the bronzer and so I feel like that's why I'm confusing which one I got first, but these duos from Jouer, again, those were my jam back in the day and I'm kind of still surprised that I still have that blush duo. I'm not gonna lie actually. <laughs> you know this would not be a video talking about the oldest products in my makeup collection if we did not mention all of ours first. Who's, who's, who's with me here? What was your first highlighter? What was your first highlighter? Was it, was it Mary Lou from The Balm? Every time I talk about Mary Lou and say this was my first highlighter, I get flooded with comments from people saying it was your first highlighter as well. Mary Lou, she was a lot of our first. We have a special connection and I think that that's lovely. I bought this highlighter off of Amazon. It came with a brush and girl, like I thought I was doing big things. I thought I was going places. I mean, I really thought Mary Luminizer was going to change my life. That was the way that this highlighter got talked up on social media. Again, probably in like 2016. I don't even think I could go through my Amazon orders back that far to see when I purchased the Mary Luminizer. And again, I've put this in Project Pans. This was my only highlighter for probably at least a year. And then I really got onto the highlight train. But I'm like so shocked. There's like a slight, like little tiny dip right here, but nothing extreme. But I just wanna know, do you still have Mary Lou in your collection? Was she your first? A couple of face duos that I have here from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. Again, I know that I had this when we moved out of the, our first home in Iowa. I know I still had it in that first house, which was the one with the red walls. I just can't remember if I had this during the red wall days or if it was after I painted. But I still, I know if it was the house in Waukee, that means I've had it for a very long time because we moved out of that house in 2019. So this is from Charlotte Tilbury, the Film Star Bronze and Glow. I can remember getting this in PR. Like I, re I can remember getting that package from Charlotte Tilbury. So I know I was in that, that front office. I'm just being so thrilled and so excited. And I had wanted the Film Star Bronze and Glow so badly, but I want to say this was like $75. And I was like, I just can't, I just can't, I just can't do it. I've talked very openly about how I put myself into debt within the first year of starting on YouTube, trying to keep up with all the new releases, trying to buy everything 
And so there was the point where I was, you know, really trying to cut back and be more mindful of what I was spending. So when I got this, I mean, I cried. I was so excited about it and I still have it and I still love it. I still wear it, still enjoy it. I can't believe, I feel like the bronzer, you can maybe notice like a, again, like a small, like, I was going to say like ramp or like a ramp on this bronzer. Um, the highlight, not as much, but both of these are beautiful. But speaking of Charlotte Tilbury, her contour wand and highlight wand, I still reference these all the time and I talk about how I've had them for such a long time, but how much I enjoy them, how much I still love them. And I mean, it's true. I can remember Again, no, I was in that walkie house. No, I was in the in the red wall office. I just can't remember if the walls were still red at that point. But I can remember doing a video trying these out and just me going into it thinking there's not a chance I'm going to like these because I was very intimidated by liquid products back then. I still kind of am, but I was very intimidated by liquid products. And I remember just being like, these are so easy to use. I don't understand. I have said for a long time that I don't consider myself to be a natural at makeup. I'm not a makeup artist. I don't aspire to be. Um, I, I don't have that sort of like visual creativity. I just enjoy it. It's fun. And I, I more enjoy the act of talking about makeup with other people. When I can find makeup products that are so easy to use and so quick and so natural, that's something that really sticks out to me. And these wands are, these are it. Like these are it. To me, they're worth the money. I need to just repurchase these. Quite honestly, I have the blush one as well, but I just got the blush one. I, I might have even been living in Vegas and I moved to Vegas in April of 2021. So I feel like I bought it around that time because my friend Risa was really hyping it up. But these are the two that I've had for the longest. Both of them are pretty much empty, quite honestly. I think the contour is more done for than the highlight wand, but... I just need to repurchase those. <laughs> and then from Natasha Denona, I have this bronze and glow. This is one of my original favorites from Natasha Denona. Now I've gone on to say that I really enjoy her mini nude eyeshadow palette. I've hit pan in that one. Um, she has some other you know, palettes that I enjoy, but this was one of the original products from the brand that I was like, this is bomb. And this was $19. I recommend these over and over and over again. And I don't mean just online. Like I have a friend here at the complex who really likes Natasha Denona and likes the eyeshadow palettes. And she sent me one of the quads, like the face quads with the bronzer and the highlight. And those are pretty pricey. I can't recall the price off the top of my head, but they're, they're pretty expensive. And she said, do you think these are worth it? I said, no get these little duos they're $19 and even if you want to get two of them and have a variety of shades it's better than getting that quad so I love the bronze and glow and I've had this for a long time it's weird I can remember going on a road trip again to Kansas City I mean I'm from Iowa so my bachelorette party was in Kansas City okay like I can remember going on a road trip to Kansas City and applying this and I know we were still living in that first house but today I pulled out the rose cheek duo and I used the blush and the highlight out of here. So this is what I have on today. I love these duos from Natasha. She has a handful out there um, and I just, I think they're great. Like I would buy these all day long. Still recommend. Why I have these concealers, like, like it kind of horrifies me. From CoverGirl, the undercover concealer. How long have I had this? It's been a long time. It's been a long time in my-ish defense. I lost it for a second there, but this one was in a in a box that just got lost and it wasn't until I was here for a while that I found it. So I believe there was even a video like where I either, I think it was my concealer declutter that I did at the end of the year. And I don't think that this was included in here because it was hidden in that box. If it would have been, I probably would have just decluttered it in that video, but now we have it. And I was like trying to wear it again, but I'm like, I don't know. I feel like maybe again, it's kind of gone off. It's I've had that for way too long, but the Armani power fabric. Okay. I, this one I have, it's, oh man, I've had it for such a long time. It's like really, it's quite disgusting around here. I don't know if it's because this is my travel concealer. When I was traveling so much in 2019, this was basically like in my pocket in the airport. Okay. Like this concealer is so easy to use. It is so easy to blend out. I truly can put this on my under eye and blend it out with my finger and it looks spectacular. So when I was doing all of that traveling in 2019 and thinking I was going to continue into 2020, I was using this all of the time. And then obviously like 2020 happened, I wasn't traveling and it was very sad. And I feel like this one just kind of was was so lonesome, was so lonesome just chilling by itself. Should I buy another one of these? Yes. 
I really should, especially because I have ramped up my traveling once again. Traveling was, oh, it's such a love of mine. And I, I'm going on another trip in two, less than two weeks, less than two weeks. I am going on a trip that kind of got sprung at me spur of the moment. And I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this. So I should buy another concealer before I go on that trip. I think that's what I just told myself. <laughs> this next one, I thought I decluttered this, but maybe I'm thinking of the foundation. This is from Charlotte Tilbury, the Wonder Glow Instant Soft to Focus Beauty Flash. I think maybe I'm thinking, Aries is disgusted with me because I can't remember. I think I'm thinking of her Light Wonder Foundation because I don't have that. So I think that's what I'm thinking I decluttered. They're in the same packaging. They look pretty similar. The Wonder Glow, Oh my gosh, I forgot about this one and I know it's right next to me. The Too Faced Born This Way, I've definitely had this for a long time, but this was all I wore for such a long time. In videos, just going out with friends, didn't matter. It was the Wonder Glow and it was the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. This was my combo and I love them. So I've definitely had these for a very long time. You can see, like you can see it. Like I, I have used a lot out of here. I can't believe I almost forgot the Born This Way. Yeah, I've had, had this for a long time too. Speaking of primers, the Milk Hydro Grip, I know I've had this for a long time and it looks like I've barely even used it. Like, I feel like this video and other videos that I'm going to do in this kind of throwback series is going to be very eye-opening on waste. I think that's gonna suck, <laughs> like just to speak frankly. Like, I think it's gonna suck to look at how much I have and how much I have around me and how much I don't use and how much I don't finish up and how much, like, I'm the first one to give products away. I run giveaways all the time. I'm always giving stuff to family, friends, people at the complex here. But there's some products that I just, I can't, like, I can't give someone the Milk Makeup Bronzer Stick. This is definitely expired. That's disgusting. You know, there's products that I cannot give away. They do just need to be tossed. And I'm like, ugh. It's gonna suck, but you know, gotta gotta take that personal responsibility, you gotta take that accountability. Lip products, I don't feel like I had a ton of lip products to include in here, which I'm, I'm kind of glad about, but definitely from MAC, the World Lip Liner, and the uh, Honey Love Lipstick. I mentioned the Honey Love in my project pan because I said I wanna see how much I can use because I was like, I've had this for years. This is from the Red Walls days. Like, I've had this for such a long time. I would love to finish it up. Um, I think that would be fantastic. Whirl, I know that I have two whirls, um, but I feel like this is the only one that I can find recently. But I love the MAC Whirl lip liner. I think it's great. This combo, I think is great. I wear it all the time. But definitely also from Charlotte Tilbury once again. This was my, like what made me fall in love with Charlotte Tilbury was her lip products. I first got the Iconic Nude, not Iconic London the brand. <laughs> I got the Iconic Nude lip liner. And I mean, you can see like this one is very loved and I need to sharpen it even more. This lip liner, when I, it was like $24. It was so expensive for me to buy at the time, but I was like... I was like, I just want to try them out. I hear so many people talk about the Charlotte lip products. This does not move. It is so easy to apply. Even if you swatch it, like it's not coming off, doesn't move from the lips. And I was like, this is phenomenal. And then I bought the Very Victoria lipstick. And this is one of my favorite lipsticks. Again, I talk about it all the time. Honestly, like I should throw this in my next Project Pan video and see if I can use it up. But I love it so much. I literally, like I wear this all the time. And I think her lip products are just phenomenal. But Definitely have had them for a hot minute. Right, a couple eye products and then we'll jump into the eyeshadow palettes. From a Sigma Beauty, these eye bases, I know these came out during my red wall days. I can remember, oh my gosh, I can remember going boating one summer and I wanna say summer of either 2017 or 2018, might've been 2018. I was boating so often. We had like a new friend in the group who had a boat and it was like, you know, that saying like, you shouldn't have a boat, but you should have a friend who has a boat. Better to have a friend have a boat than you have a boat. Something along those lines. We were boating all of the time. This is what I was wearing on my eyes. So from Sigma Beauty, their eye bases, I would first put down Persuade, which is um, just like a matte nude shade. And then I would put Bubbly on top, which is really shimmery and sparkly. And I was like, this is it, like this is the look. And these stayed and it was a reason why I loved them so much and I loved wearing them boating because I could go in the water, I could be you know, in the sunshine all day, I could be sweating and still even bubbly. Like my eyeshadow would still look shiny at the end of the day and I was like, yep, this is what I need. So we have Persuade right here. So I'd lay that first and then bubbly on top, bubbly. still beautiful, still beautiful. The Sigma eye bases are very legit and they still have them around. 
definitely would still recommend. Then from Hourglass, who remembers the Scattered Light? The Scattered Light eyeshadows, oh my goodness. So this one is in Reflect. This is what like everybody was talking about. And I feel like I made a lot of really good progress on this one, but when did these come out? 2017, 2018? I have had these for a long time. I had, I would always compare this one with the Marc Jacobs. Caparazzi was the shade that I had. The Marc Jacobs, I'm blanking on the name, but I know you guys are gonna know it. And I remember I ended up decluttering that one because I liked the Hourglass Reflect shade better, but these were all the rage for a while. Everybody was talking about these, everybody was wearing these, and somehow I still have Reflect in my collection. Let's move over to palettes because like I said, this is how, where we're gonna finish the video, and this is what, what I had more of than I thought. I truly thought it was gonna be the Makeup Geek and maybe like one eyeshadow palette, but then I was like, oh hey ColourPop, <laughs> what's up? So the Sweet Talk palette, oh the sweet talk palette this is so funny to me because i can remember this is where i started to realize i was super overwhelmed by ColourPop because i was buying so much from ColourPop at the time this was before i was on their pr list and i was buying so many of their products i was doing that thing where i was buying right away fast shipping getting the products putting it up on my channel right away like trying it out putting it up right away i remember leaving my friends like we, me and my friends met together and we were gonna go to the movies. And I, before we went to the movies, it was like your package has been delivered and I was like, peace out, bye, I gotta go. I look back and I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. I can remember the Sweet Talk coming out and talking about this in a Will I Buy It video and I'm like, I'm, I'm too overwhelmed. Like I have too many releases from them, no. And this was, they did send this to me in PR. If this wasn't my first PR package, it was one of the first PR packages and I was so excited about it and I tried it out and I was like, this palette is beautiful. I loved it. I wore it so often. It was my travel palette in like, once again, like 2017, 2018 probably. This was what I traveled with. And I remember thinking like, I almost passed up this palette because I was so overwhelmed by the brand. Isn't that interesting to think about? Like we all know ColourPop releases a lot, but that was back Again, 2017, 2018 time frame. But then also from ColourPop, this is the Dream Street palette. This was the collaboration with Kathleen Lights. Beautiful palette. This was another one that I traveled with so much and I just, I, I thought it was phenomenal. I really enjoy Kathleen Lights. And um, yeah, these are these are probably my oldest, these are, these are my oldest ColourPop palettes in my collection. Oh, Desi and Katie, okay. So I believe, I was trying to look at the dates of some of these. I believe this one came out in 2018, but I'm literally looking at like blog posts and some of them are undated. And YouTube now does not have dates on videos. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that, but it's driving me absolutely insane. I will click on an old video of mine and it doesn't say the date anywhere and I'm like, this sucks because that's what I would use for like research purposes. But I believe this one launched in 2018. I mean, Desi and Katie with their, I, I, I loved their collabs. I loved the, their videos together. I still watch, well, no, neither of them really does YouTube anymore, which I understand, but I still follow them like on Instagram. I keep up with their businesses. And it's really cool to see like where they came, like I started following Katie, I wanna say before she even had 10,000 subscribers. Like she was very, very small. She worked at Target, I believe. John, her husband would never come on camera. And she got the um, opportunity with Ipsy and met Desi from there and like everything went. And I, I love looking at them and they're very inspiring to me, especially as a business owner. Um, I really look up to them a lot. And I, I bought all of their collabs. I did not like the first one that came out, the quad. I wasn't really a fan of that, but I bought the Friendcation. And again, it's not like an absolute favorite of mine, but I still really enjoy it. And I've kept it around for the memories. I like the sparkly packaging. What a time that was. Then the Natasha Denona Gold Eyeshadow Palette. I remember this one so vividly because I actually had a subscriber send this to me. And this was so like I was so shocked and overwhelmed <laughs> to get this eyeshadow palette because this is one of the like 125, 129 palettes and I just couldn't believe someone thought of me. I was in a really difficult place at the time and um, had a lot going on personally and I can remember getting this palette and then a few months later my ex-husband and I had made the decision to move out of the Des Moines area into his uh, hometown, um, a smaller city in Iowa. And when our house was on the market, 
I would take this eyeshadow palette with me. Like it was like I would take my dog, I would take my laptop, I would take like any cash that I had around, you know, all the things that are important to me. I would pack up my makeup. It was so difficult to be filming YouTube videos while having a house on the market because I would get a call like, we can be there in an hour. And I'd be in the middle of filming makeup everywhere, brushes everywhere, and I'd pack everything up and then I'd take, I always took my camera with me of course. And I also took the Natasha Denona gold palette and again we moved in 2019 so I know that I've had this palette for a long time but just that's this palette has special memories for all of those reasons uh, but I just remember thinking like I can't leave the gold palette here like what if someone who's looking at the house as a makeup lover and is like that's an expensive palette I'm gonna take it <laughs> like I had to bring it with me lastly we're gonna finish it off with some Anastasia palettes now I really could not figure out Again, the time frame on these, I'm so mad that I can't see dates on YouTube videos. But I want to say they maybe both released around 2018. I think Soft Glam was first and then Sultry. I know Sultry released for the holidays. So looking at like blog post dates, I believe they came out the same year, but I... I I could be wrong, but of course when we think of Anastasia, we think of modern renaissance and I was very ruthless in my last declutter series, which again, I do my declutter series every year towards the end of the year. I mean, I was ruthless in my eyeshadow palette declutter because I was already at that time feeling so overwhelmed. I also went from a five bedroom house where literally three of those rooms were for my makeup. That's ridiculous. Again, when I talk about overconsumption and waste and feeling overwhelmed, that's why. And then I went from a five bedroom house to a two bedroom apartment where one of the rooms is now my office, my filming space, my makeup collection, and my inventory for my own brand. I'm so overwhelmed in here. I feel like I have no space to move. I get comments sometimes in my videos where I'm like in my kitchen or like I have a messy countertop or something and I'm like, you don't understand. I. I don't have a place to put everything <laughs> and this is why I'm trying to declutter this is why I am trying to cut back and this is why I'm just trying to be a little bit more organized and it it has to start with the makeup like that's where it has to start but out of my Anastasia palettes I do have left um and some of my older palettes the soft glam and the sultry now I bought the soft glam because I really did love the modern renaissance and soft glam she's gotten some good some good love for me. I really do want to put an eyeshadow palette in a project pan and see how I do. I think that would be fun. If you have any suggestions or anything you'd like to see let me know. But then the sultry, like the sultry is my jam. The sultry, like this palette to me, it's, it's, I just, I enjoyed this one so much. I wore this actually on New Year's Eve for this year. So New Year's Eve for 2022, as we rang in 2022, this is the palette that I wore. I still enjoy it, I still love it. I've had it in my collection for many years, but I still like them. So these are some of the older palettes in my collection. After that, that's everything though. I know that this is gonna be a bit of a longer video. I really did not think there was going to be this many products but again my my focus right now is on cutting back on using what i have you know going to be decluttering and it's going to be another ruthless declutter series for sure but if there's anything that you would like to see do you want to see a full face using some of these products you know definitely let me know i really appreciate your suggestions and all the support and again i know a lot of you are feeling overwhelmed too so maybe we can just have some fun together on my channel playing with older makeup products chatting about them some of the the memories of youtube like i think that's so fun like a lot of us have been watching youtube for a long time and we have these these bigger collections and like what what's something fun that we can do with them? other than that that is everything for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please make sure to give this one a thumbs up i hope you also consider subscribing before you go and i'll see you in my next video